Well, that was a, uh, was a hard-fought game um, by both teams. I thought both teams really competed and played very, very, very hard. Um, it's a gut-wrenching loss for us, and I told our guys in the locker room afterwards, man, we got to be able to pick ourselves up off the mat. Seton Hall is not going to feel sorry for us. Um, we're going to have another great opportunity on Saturday. Um, but we got to keep improving. we got to keep getting better. You know, I thought, um, obviously, you know, that we got to make free throws. I mean, we, you can't win close. You can't win any games in the Big East going 11 of 25 from the free throw line, period. You know, we got to step up. We got to knock those in. Can't get mental. Um, our guys, you know, they obviously work really, really hard on that every single day. They shoot 100 free throws. Um, can't be mental about it. They got to be confident. And, and, and we got to be able to knock those in moving forward. But I thought that the, the second half, we went a little on a drought there for several minutes, and that really, really hurt us. We had a couple really, really costly turnovers on some entry passes that led to either a foul or a layup at the other end, and that allowed them to get back in the game. Um, then from there, it was an absolute war. It was an absolute war, but I thought our guys really competed. We got to be able to execute better on offense, get some better shots, can't go th get through, so, can't have such long droughts, and then we got to be able to make our free throws. Yeah, I expected him to shoot it. You know, we didn't have any timeouts left. Um, you know, Don, we subbed him in because he's got, he's got the, him and Paul had, and Paul had fought, fouled out. But those two guys got the best arm on our team, and it was a heck of a pass by Don. Uh, great catch by Tyreek. He's just got to go up with a shot. You know, uh, again, he, he's again we got to always know that time and score. It was a couple two two point three seconds left, I think, or something like that. Um, yeah, he's got to go up with a shot. Mm -hmm. before. Um, did you expect that he would be fouled? Were you surprised he wasn't fouled? Yeah, you know, I, I told those guys, I told Q when he dribbled it up, I said, hey, if, they, if you feel like they're about to foul you, just shoot it, see if we can get three free throws. Um, but they obviously didn't foul. I don't know if they're, if they're playing. Sometimes players don't always execute, you know, what you're, what you're supposed to do. So, but they didn't obviously foul. Um, and Najee had a pretty good look. I mean, it's the same look he had. I think it was against UConn and Missouri this year. Um, and he knocked it in, big shot. Obviously, you know, the free throws stand out, but do you get the sense that, you know, it was an, in, an incomplete performance, but did your team take a step in the right direction tonight at all in your eyes? You know, I, with, without watching film, again, I thought our guys really competed. Marquette did. I mean, they played really, really hard. Um, guys were fighting, I mean, diving out on the floor for loose ball. Paul got hurt the one possession. There was like four guys on the floor. A two for Marquette, two for Xavier. Um, and, and Coach Wojo does a great job of getting his guys to play really hard. So um, I, I thought both teams competed. You know, we just got to keep working. You know, again, this will, you know, we'll be able to tell who we are here from here on out. Like, how are we going to respond to this? Uh, but I did think, I thought we took a small step forward. Got to knock on our free throws, though, man. Like, you're not winning any games at this level <laughs> going 11 for 25. Never. That's not happening. And uh, we got to get that fixed. Are you worried that that like this is a loss that that could beat you again in a sense, or do you believe that they can move on from this? We have to move on. I'm gonna move on. I mean, I, I'm the I'm the leader of the team. They're gonna go as I go. So I'm moving on. I'm gonna watch film tonight of this game, see what we did well, so we can do a heck of a lot better. Um, prepare for Seton Hall on Saturday. You know, that, that's my whole focus. When you guys dropped into the one three one, was that to preserve energy for guys at fouls? Was it a another tactical plan? Man, you know, I, I I thought they were just getting to the line every single time. It seemed like there was a foul every possession. Uh, so I just said, hey, just we got to do something different. <laughs> got to do something different to maybe you know help them lose their rhythm on offense. Maybe they wouldn't drive it. Um, you know, that's that's why we went to it. And we had some guy, obviously a lot of guys in foul trouble as well. So because we were fouling so much. Marcus Howard went out with, I think, 12 minutes left. Uh, did you think at that point the complexion of the game would change because he was primarily their top scorer at that point? Yeah, M Marcus is a uh, – he is an elite-level player, obviously leading college basketball and scoring. Um, he's, he's one of the best players I've ever coached against. I mean, he is – he can beat you single-handedly. I mean, he really can. Um, so, yeah, you know, they started driving it more. They, they started becoming a paint-level team. They wanted to really get the ball to the paint. Um, 
and uh, you know we had we 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 had we had to stop fouling. We were just fouling way too much, Shannon. Um, you know we got to guard without fouling and, and be able to handle their high ball screen stuff the correct way. You know I know you're never looking for excuses, but it seemed like on both sides there were some questionable calls that impacted this game down the stretch. Did you get any clarity on that when you were talking to the referees about some of those calls? And, you know, they're human. They make mistakes. We all make mistakes. I, I don't know, you know, without watching film. Again, it, it is what it is. When there's a, a flagrant foul like that, I think it happened in the, the first half where I think your trainers ran out and – did, did Marquette get to pick who shoots the free throws, and is that what happened when Tyreek went down too? Yes, so the first one, because it wasn't a flagrant, the first one wasn't. All right, so he just got – or we had a player get injured. So when we sub in a player, they get to pick the shooter. But when there's an F1 foul, right, flagrant, um, we, get to, we get to sub in whoever we want, and that becomes the shooter. And I went with Jason because I felt like Jason was the only one who had played recently. Uh, like when I say recently, like – Within the last couple minutes, uh, I felt like Kiki and and and, uh, and Bryce specifically had been sitting over there for a little bit, and sometimes that's really hard. And unfortunately, Jason didn't make his free throws. Coach Quinton missed the last two games, but came back tonight. Um, looked pretty aggressive on the offensive end. Is that what you want to see from him? Yeah, I thought he did what the game told him to do for the most part. You know, he made some really nice passes. Um, he lived in the lane. He got some. I thought he got for the most part some good threes, some good looks, and he knocked them in. You know, he. Again, at some point, he's going to knock him in, right? You know, he's just got to keep his confidence high. But um, I thought overall he had a nice game. Thanks. Coach. Thanks.